Hey dude, it's Thub, and today, oh, today is an exciting day. I'll tell you why. Well, I mean, if you didn't read the, uh, the video title or see the thumbnail, then, uh, well, thanks for being here, and shout out to all my, uh, my blind viewers. Does that even work? What do you call, what does a blind person call when they're enjoying TV? Are they a viewer, or, uh, I guess just audience member? Well, I think that was a new record for how long it takes Thub to get off on a tangent. So having that yard sale felt really good. It was cathartic. It's nice to, to unload a whole bunch of stuff. And it's nice to have a fistful of money afterwards. So I'm going to continue on that train, and uh, this is a multi-stage process, getting this thing all sorted out. But I think, I think we're making a good pace. So the next easiest way to clear up a bunch of space at once is going to be... A scrap run. Yes, scrap run! Today is a great day to do it. One thing in particular I think today would be a great day for, and I've been letting it pile up, so this should be good, is the brass. Another reason why I think today is a good day is because copper is doing really well, and if you know, it's doing some kind of funny things, but um, mostly doing really good, and maybe I'll get into some more detail on that at the end of the video, but if you know anything about brass, you know it's just cheap copper in disguise. So naturally the prices follow. If today's going to work out though, I can't spend any more than an hour doing this, so let's get right into it and see how quickly we can crank through. Okay, one hour. Let's go, boys! There's gonna be a pound of brass right there. It's an easy dollar. Remember that trick I showed you about how to test if it's brass or not? Not all of us have a grinder. You can see the color in there. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, brass. Oh, come on now. I know sometimes when things are seized, you can just release them with a tap tap of a hammer. Nope, didn't help. Okay, so I'm gonna have to make a pile of those. See, that piece isn't brass. Autofocus would be nice. This piece is in brass, but I bet I can just bend this flange and now slide it off. One bucket, we're gonna second one. I tried to bring this in last time and they were like, oh hell no, because it's got all those, um, because it's got all those little uh, rubbery nubbins on it. So this time, take the time remove all the little pieces of rubber and I mean they're not wrong that uh, that much rubber probably weighs quite a bit I'm gonna motor through this and then we'll see there we are still a pretty heavy piece of brass <coughs> but yeah it's probably like a half a pound of rubber that's fair 
So we've gone through a second bucket, now we're on the last one. This has already taken a lot longer than I wanted it to. Motoring. New discovery, check these things when you pull them off, because this one's actually brass, which is nice. Unfortunately, the one that it came off of, the Allen key is really stuck in there, and I can't seem to get it off, so adding that to the cut pile. Now this piece has brass here, but the rest is copper, so I am definitely going to separate the two. because I've got an easy point of access. the tool. Oh, it's right in front of me. It's very close enough. Nope. There. Now this piece, I could use my tool to separate the pieces that have the solder on them from this piece and have some number one and some number two, but I don't think this length is enough to justify that. Here's another fun tactic. Um, this one here has these thick rubber tubes on it, um, so I'm probably only going to be able to get dirty brass because it's got kind of a high percentage of other garbage. But I can't really get my little tool to spin around in there, so here's what we're going to do. Copper's nice and soft, right? So if you're not going to save it for something, you can get through it pretty quick with a hammer. <laughs> now this piece, I do think, is worth the time to separate that little piece of solder to increase the value. There we go. Soldery dirty cup. Good copper. We're getting there. Alright, that took two hours, uh, which is twice as long as I wanted it to take. Um, brass is good money, but you gotta set some time apart for it. <clears throat> so this is what we ended up with. That's the pile of garbage. This here's the copper. The nice shiny stuff and the stuff that's not so shiny but doesn't have any solder on it. Over here, this is the rest, not too much. This is just copper with no brass. It has a bunch of paint and stuff on it. These pieces, I thought they were copper because they're the right color, but they're not. They're copper coated, I guess. Um, that's all the nice shiny brass. I think you get a better price for that. And then two buckets of other brass. Nice. Uh, and then these longer pieces, which are also shiny. Which maybe I should keep, I'm not really sure. But I don't really have a project in mind for these ones. And then I'm gonna do something that I, and then I'm gonna do something that I never ever do, which is bring in a pile of dirty brass. like. Uh, on purpose, not just things that I couldn't separate, but see, to get through these I would have to take the angle grinder with a cutting disc and slice through that and then fart around a bit more. It would take a bunch more time and it's, it's worth it, but I just want to get rid of them today, so that's just what I've chosen to do. Now we're going to load this up, but we're also going to put in some aluminum because we're going there anyway. Now sometimes when it's just a few, I don't feel like taking out the uh, angle grinder. And in that situation, Cast aluminum is brittle, so you can always just bash things straight through it. All right. All right, things are sorted. Let's get things loaded.
Well, it's not the most full this car has ever been, but it ain't bad. Can I get a thumbnail out of this? I bet that'll make a decent thumbnail. Bam, thumbnail. Maybe. <sighs> oh, there. Like I said though, that took too long. We gotta move. Just, let me make sure I've got my ID. Got it, let's go. It's a good thing driving while holding a camera isn't dangerous or anything, or this would be a really stupid idea. Especially with like 500 plus pounds of trash in the back. I don't think there's going to be any fast way to do this. There's, it's not going to be a quick in and out situation because this is the first day after a long weekend and there's going to be a lot of people with scrap that they would have brought in a different day that are going to be piling up today. And it's not early. It is currently 3.30. So we'll see. I might, I mean, if we... If I'm just supremely fortunate today, we might end up rolling in there just in the middle of a lull. But I wouldn't bank on it. Empire. And what do you think, boys? Holy cow! It's true! There's nobody here! Like, barely. My goodness, that's something to be excited about! We might actually be able to get home before rush hour gets stupid. Oh, and you know they're not down with me filming in there, so I'll get back to you guys after we've got this all. She's riding pretty low. I love seeing that, I really do. One thing I don't love hearing though, I just asked him like, just to be funny, so you're paying a lot of money for copper? And he said, no. Price is going down actually, which is weird because the uh, stock price is going up. I hope I didn't pick the wrong day. Alrighty, got that all taken care of. Now let's get the heck out of here. It's 4.30, so traffic has definitely started getting bad, but if we motor, we might be able to avoid the absolute thickest of it. We're gonna scoot on home, and then go through some numbers, if you like. Um, what? Yes, please. You're coming with me. Nice to meet you. Right. We're back. I went on a Kijiji pickup real quick. It was something I needed. I got all these blades for 10 bucks. But that's basically what my life is. Is an endless series of plastic bag, plastic bag, plastic bag, plastic bag, plastic bag. So Scrap Life today says 330 bucks. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about money. First up, I just want to point out that yes, our hundred dollar bills do smell like maple syrup. I'm not even making this up. You need a couple of them in your hand and you rub them together kind of like a scratch and sniff and trust me, it's there. It's weird, I don't know why, I love it. Go Canada. But that wasn't the point I was trying to make. Look at. This is the first time I've actually gotten one of these. Now I guess this is the 2017 version, so a whole bunch of other people have probably already seen this, but like, how cool is that? It's all purple except for like, the northern lights up there. Like all the different resources, there's that like shimmery green thing over there. Those I guess would be the Rocky Mountains, probably. And over here we got all this shimmery green stuff, and uh, Sir John A. Macdonald. Um, historical figure, but all, not generally considered to be a good guy by today's standards, and a bunch of other, like, this is just really cool. This is where we came from on that ye old paper bill. Then we went to this one. Gotta have the first prime, like, this is what we've been rocking for a while, all the plastic bills look like this. And then we switched over to this thing, and I don't understand why. I like the purple, though. Anyway, that's not really, that's not what I wanted to talk about either. This is what we're here to talk about. So I was going to show you graphs and stuff about copper and how it's sitting at uh, just a hair under the highest point it's been in two years. 
but um, it wasn't reflected in the price I got paid today. I actually got five cents less for number two insulated copper wire than I did the last time I was there. So I guess the yard doesn't always directly reflect the performance of the metal. I don't understand. Um, but if they're a couple days behind, then I think they made a lot more money than I did today. Well, of course they made more money than I did today. They've been scrapping all day. But what are we? So if you care, you can pause right there, and then you can see all the numbers. That should be plenty focused. I'm just going to detail the, the interesting ones. So I did separate some wire because they do actually do a number one. And that pays a dollar thirty-five as opposed to ninety cents for the number two. So there was only eight pounds of that, but that um, that was awesome. Collectively, though, I had seventy-two pounds of wire, which isn't bad considering I didn't actually go to that many different locations to grab it. So batteries and barbecues are always some of my favorites. Barbecues, I think I had six of them, and that was thirty-five bucks. And then batteries, there was only four of them turned into uh, forty-nine dollars, so fifty bucks. Aluminum, whatever. Let's talk about brass and copper. I got a buck forty a pound for the clean brass, so that turned into seventy-five bucks. And then the other ones, a um, dollar a pound for the slightly dirty stuff. I guess I do have to separate that, but that's the tap brass. That's still way better than the other place. That's what I like about this place. And then the dirty brass, which is the stuff that I just completely gave up on. Um, that thirty pounds of that stuff at twenty cents a pound, six dollars. So you get five times as much for light, dirty brass, and seven times as much for clean brass. If I hadn't cleaned any of it, and I just brought in the 104 pounds, but it probably would have been 130 pounds if I had all that other junk on it, I would have gotten 20 to 25 dollars instead of 101 dollars. So that means the two hours that I spent doing it was about somewhere around $75 an hour. So yes, it was a pain in the butt and it did take a bunch of time, but it was, it's one of the best uh, returns for your time when it comes to scrapping. So don't bring in dirty brass. I was just being lazy. I do kind of wish I'd, nope, nope, nope. Clean your non-ferrous, folks, that's the lesson here. I mean, everybody already knew that, but I think that I just wanted to help illustrate what I could have had if I didn't put any effort in at all. Now I really want another ice cap, but I'm probably not gonna do that because time is short, and if I don't uh, hop in there and actually get some stuff done and stop being distracted, then I will find myself trapped forever in an alternate timeline where I failed Bearded Divers Challenge, and I just can't live with that. I can't let that happen. So thank you again for hanging out. I hope this was a little, had a little more helpful information. If not, I'm glad you uh, stopped by and I hope you enjoyed it in all the rest of your journeys. Until I see you tomorrow, leave it better than you found it and keep doing the thing.